Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Pre-Calc Lesson 1, Geometry Review. This lesson is going to be a review of a lot of the things that we did during Algebra 2, and this lesson will be mostly definitions, so be prepared for lots of writing. However, there will be lots of other lessons where it will be more interactive. Here we go. So, the first definition we have is a line. A line is determined by two points, and it looks like this. Notice I have arrows on either end. That is because a line continues forever in either direction. We also have a line, this is a segment. A segment has a defined beginning and a defined end. A plane, planes are determined by three non-collinear points. Non-collinear, this is a term that means that they are not in the same line. Collinear means in the same line. These two points here and here are collinear. Non-collinear means they are not in the same line. And this is an example of a plane. Another example of the plane would be this paper that I am writing on, or the paper you are writing on. Coplanar, lines that lie in the same plane, that one's a little more self-explanatory. Coplanar in this example could be this line and this line. That would be coplanar. The opposite of coplanar is skew lines, lines that are not in the same plane. We could think of them as a skew, if that helps you remember it. They are skew lines. Think of the corner of a room that looks like this. These lines could be skew. The next section we have, we're going to talk about angles. This should be review from Algebra 2. I hope you remember it. Straight angle looks exactly like this. It's 180 degrees. We talked a lot about straight angles with transversals, which we will get to transversals later. A right angle, we are familiar with it. Notice I'm using this notation here. That means angle. Please use notations like that as well. It makes your note taking faster. I also use this notation here as a right angle. 90 degrees, this is typically what we see. We most often use right angles when we will be talking about a right triangle. We will get to triangles later. Acute angle, I learned to remember it as a acute angle. It is less than 90 degrees. Again, I'm using symbols to be able to make note-taking faster. The acute angle is less than 90 degrees, which looks like this. Obtuse angle, greater than 90 degrees, which would look something like this. Then we have our two pairs. You do need to know these definitions. We will use this a lot when we do proofs. Supplementary angles, they add up to equal 180. For example, this was angle A and this was angle B. Angle A plus angle B equals 180. Complementary angles add to equal 90. If we had these two angles, this was A and B, angle A plus angle B would equal 90. We have particular notation that we use. Angle A is congruent to angle B. We write it as this with the two line squiggle on top. That means congruent. Typically when we talk about line segments, we'll say segment A equals segment B. We will get into that a little later. Now, continuing on, our next segment is triangles. This is the very basic triangles. We are not yet into trig functions. Equal angular triangle. All angles are equal. Notice I had a small typo. It is angles. Equilateral, all sides equal. Again, I'm using notation here. Right triangle has right angle. 
can a right triangle have more than one right angle? No, there is only one right angle or else you would have a triangle that would look something like this and clearly that does not connect. That is not a triangle. Acute triangle has all acute angles, meaning all angles are less than 90 degrees. Obtuse triangle has one obtuse angle. It is important that you know there is only one because we know that all angles in a triangle add up to equal 180. This is a postulate we will talk about later. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle equals 180. That's another way to say that. If we had more than one obtuse angle, it would no longer equal 180. Isosceles triangles, we draw it like this, has at least two sides are equal, meaning an equilateral triangle is also an isosceles triangle but an isosceles triangle is not necessarily equilateral. Scaling triangle means all sides have different lengths. That is our triangle section. And now we move on to transversals. We know that in a transversal, we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. In here, we have different properties. We remember that each pair of corresponding angles, corresponding angles are congruent. Corresponding angles would be this angle and this angle. They're corresponding because they are in the same position. We also know that if two parallel lines, I'm gonna denote them like this so we remember they are parallel. If they are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles is congruent. Alternate interior angles. Notice my abbreviations. Alternate interior angles, they are congruent. And this I'm labeling as angle B here and here. They are interior because they are on the insides of the parallel lines and alternate because they are on opposite sides of the transversal. We also have alternate exterior angles and they are congruent denoted as angle C which I will write out here. Again, the alternate, meaning they are on opposite sides of the transversal, and exterior means they are on the outside of the parallel lines. We also have in here a straight angle created by angle A and angle B, which we remember, that means angle A plus angle B equals 180, which also means that angle A and angle B are supplementary. It all ties together. Woohoo! The next section we have, we have areas and sectors of circles. I hope we know this by now. The area of a circle, I often denote a circle as a circle with a dot in the center. The reason I put the dot in the center is so that it doesn't just look like an O, it is clearly denoted as a circle. The area of the circle, I hope we know, is pi r squared. Units squared. Don't forget your units. If you had me last year, you heard this saying, for the love of units. Don't forget your units. We also have the circumference. 
of a circle, which we know is 2 pi r units. Notice the area is unit squared, circumference, or the length of a circle is just units. Then we have the area of a sector. A sector looks like this, or you can think of it as a piece of pi. That is a sector. This angle here that is what we call the central angle. And the area of a sector, we should know, is the central angle over 360. Why 360? Because there are 360 degrees in a whole circle, times pi r squared. Again, units squared. Notice a key thing to remember, we have the area of a circle here and the area of a sector. We can remember if you're looking for area of a sector, you plug in area of a circle. The next section we have is the length of a sector. You will also see this called as the length of an arc. This is our sector. This portion here, that is our arc. The length of the arc is again central angle over 360 times 2 pi r units. Again, we have length here and length here. So we can remember when we're looking for length of sector, we look at the length of the circle or circumference. Questions? That's dumb. You can ask me in class. Now, here's our first example. It is example 1.1 in your book. It is page 10 if you are using the second edition. I don't know what page it is for the third edition. And we have a circle with a shaded portion, a central angle here of 126 degrees. And it says the radius of the circle is two root five meters. Find the area of the shaded region. Well, the first thing that we do is we are going to find the area of this sector. Now there are two ways you can do this problem. You can find the area of this sector. So we would say that the area of the sector is 126 over 360 times pi r squared. This would be meters squared. Then we would find the area of the whole circle, the whole circle, which would be pi r squared. And we would do the area of the circle minus the area of the sector, and that would give us the shaded region. This is one way you can do it. Another way, perhaps easier, is we would say if this is 126 degrees, we can find this angle by doing 360 minus 126, which gives me 234 degrees. Now, this portion over here is a sector with a central angle of 234 degrees. So the area of my shaded is the central angle, which we're now saying is 234, over 360 times pi r squared. We can do this in our calculators. It gives us 13 pi meters squared, which is our final answer. Notice how I put the units. Do not forget your units. For the love, for the love of units. We'll work on that. 
If you don't know how to do this in your calculator, we will work on it in class tomorrow. The next problem I'm going to do is number 28 from your homework. This is the picture. It says, in the figure shown, all adjacent circles are tangent to each other and the outer circles are tangent to the square. When it says they are tangent, that just means they are touching. The sum of the areas of the nine circles is 52 pi meters squared and the circles have equal areas. So, we have nine circles with equal areas. So that means pi r squared times 9 is our total area of the circles, which they tell us is 52 pi meters squared. This tells me that my radius is in meters. And I can find my radius here by first canceling out pi's, if there's pi on both sides, it cancels out my radi or my pi's, excuse me. Then I am going to divide both sides by nine. So I have r squared is 52 over nine. Okay. And I could then say r is the square root of 52 over three. I took the square root of both sides. Now, if I go back to my picture, I have something like this. In here, each of my radii, I guess this is the square wall, each radii goes from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle, meaning I have one, two, three, four, five, six radii on each side. Each side is six R. I can find the whole area of the square. The area of the square is side squared which in this case would be 36 r squared, which we know r squared is 52 over nine. This gives me 36 times 52 over nine. And we know that 36 divided by nine gives me four. So we have four times 52 which ends up giving me 208 meters squared is the area of my square. It asks me, the question asks me to find the area of the shaded portion of the figure. So I would do the area of the square minus the area of the circles, which would be 208 minus the area of the circles, it told me, was 52 pi, and all of this is meters squared. This is your exact answer. Or you could do this in your calculator and do 208 minus 52 pi, and get a decimal and round it to two decimal places. It does not specify what it wants the answer to be in, so I would leave it as this. We will go over the rest if there are any questions in class tomorrow.